Pyrrhus of Epirus, a comprehensive biography and historical legacy. Pyrrhus of Epirus, also known as Pyrrhus the Great, was a significant figure in the Hellenistic period. Here are some key points about his life and accomplishments. Early life, Pyrrhus was born around 319-318 BC in Epirus, Greece. He belonged to the Iacid dynasty and was the son of Iacides and Thyia. Reign in Epirus, Pyrrhus first became the king of Epirus in 306 BC when he was just 13 years old. However, he was dethroned by Cassander after a short reign. Wars of the Diadochi Pyrrhus was involved in the Wars of the Diadochi, the power struggles that followed the death of Alexander the Great. He managed to regain his throne in Epirus with the support of Ptolemy Isoter in 297 BC. Pyrrhic War Pyrrhus is most famous for his involvement in the Pyrrhic War, 280-275 BC, a conflict between the Greek city of Tarentum and the expanding Roman Republic. He won several battles against the Romans, notably the battles of Heraclea and Asculum. However, these victories came at a high cost in terms of casualties, leading to the coining of the term Pyrrhic victory to describe a victory won at too great a cost. Sicilian Campaign After the early successes against Rome, Pyrrhus turned his attention to Sicily, where he aimed to establish his dominion. He managed to capture parts of the island from Carthage but was eventually driven out. Macedonian Throne Pyrrhus seized the Macedonian throne from Antigonus II Gonatas in 274 BC and became the ruler of Macedonia. Invasion of the Peloponnese In 272 BC, Pyrrhus invaded the Peloponnese, aiming to expand his territory and influence. He engaged in an unsuccessful assault on Sparta. Death Pyrrhus met his end during a street battle in Argos in 272 BC. He was killed in the midst of the conflict. Pyrrhus is remembered as a brilliant military commander, but his victories were often too costly, which is why his name is associated with the concept of a Pyrrhic victory. His military campaigns had a significant impact on the politics and power dynamics of the Hellenistic world and the Roman Republic during this period. The name Pyrrhus has an interesting etymology rooted in ancient Greek. It can be understood in a few ways. Flame-like or flammable, the Latinized Pyrrhus is derived from the Greek pyros, pyroroomicron, which means flame-like or flammable. This interpretation comes from the Greek word pyr, pyro, which means fire, and the suffix ros, roomicron, which can indicate pertaining to or able. So, pyros essentially means pertaining to fire or fire-like. Red-colored or fiery, another interpretation of the name suggests that it means fiery or red-colored. In this context, pyros might have been used to describe someone with red hair, although it is not entirely clear whether this was its primary meaning. Alternate name for Neoptolemus, pyros was also used as an alternate name for Neoptolemus, who was the son of Achilles and the princess Didamia in Homeric Greek mythology. In this mythological context, the name may have carried specific associations related to Neoptolemus and his character. The name Pyrrhus has historical and mythological significance and reflects the rich linguistic and cultural heritage of ancient Greece. It is often associated with qualities related to fire or redness, which adds depth to its meaning and symbolism. Pyrrhus' early life was marked by political instability and shifting alliances in his home region of Epirus. Here are the key events of his early years. Parentage, Pyrrhus was born around 319 BC to Prince Iacides of Epirus and Thyia, a noblewoman from Thessaly. Thyia was the daughter of the Thessalian general Menon. Notably, Pyrrhus was related to Alexander the Great through his cousin Olympias. Joint rule of Epirus, in 319-318 BC, Aribas, who was Pyrrhus' grandfather and the regent of Epirus, passed away. This led to a joint rule of Epirus by Pyrrhus' father, Iacides, and Neoptolemus. Conflict with Cassander, Iacides supported Olympias, who was in conflict with Cassander, a powerful figure in the wars of the Diadochi. In 317 BC, when Pyrrhus was only two years old, Olympias sought Iacides' assistance once again, leading to him marching on Macedon. However, his army faced mutinies, and many soldiers deserted. As a result, his forces were too small to achieve any significant goals. Dethronement of Iacides, the mutineers who returned to Epirus fomented a rebellion against Iacides, who was away. 
Cassander, seizing the opportunity, sent his general Lysiscus to act as a regent for the underage Neoptolemus. Epirus effectively became a puppet kingdom under Cassander's influence. Flight to the Talantians, Pyrrhus and his family fled to the north and sought refuge with Glaucias of the Talantians, a prominent Illyrian tribe. Pyrrhus was raised by Beroia, Glaucia's wife, who was herself a member of the Eacidae dynasty. Cassander's focus on the east, in 313 BC, Cassander turned his attention to the east, where he was engaged in a conflict with Antigonus Monophthalmus, one of the Diadochi. Fearing an invasion from Asia Minor, Cassander shifted his focus from the western regions, including Epirus. Eacides return, taking advantage of Cassander's distraction in the east, Eacides returned to Epirus. He seems to have regained popularity and raised a sizable army. Death of Eacides, Cassander responded by sending his brother, Philip, with an army to confront Eacides. In the ensuing battles, Eacides was wounded in the last encounter and died soon after. These early years of Pyrrhus' life were marked by political turmoil, changing allegiances, and the influence of powerful figures such as Cassander in the tumultuous aftermath of the conquests of Alexander the Great. Pyrrhus' family faced exile, and he grew up in the care of Glaucias and Beroia, who played a significant role in his upbringing. Pyrrhus' first reign in Epirus was marked by his initial ascent to the throne and subsequent challenges to his rule. Here is an overview of this period. Glaucia's invasion and Pyrrhus' accession, in 307 BC, Glaucias, the ruler of the Talantians in Illyria, invaded Epirus. He supported Pyrrhus in his bid for the Epirote throne. At the time, Pyrrhus was only eleven years old, so his guardians ruled on his behalf until he came of age. Guardianship and travel to Illyria, Pyrrhus' guardians managed the affairs of Epirus until he reached the age of seventeen. When he came of age, he traveled to the court of Glaucias in Illyria, where he attended the wedding of one of Glaucias' sons. This visit was a significant event in his early life. Molosion Rebellion and Neoptolemus return, during Pyrrhus' absence in Illyria, the Molosions, a people in Epirus, rose in rebellion against his rule. They succeeded in driving out Pyrrhus' supporters and reinstated Neoptolemus on the Epirote throne. This marked the second time Neoptolemus assumed the throne. Inability of Glaucias to help, unlike the previous instance where Glaucias had supported Pyrrhus in reclaiming the throne, this time Glaucias was unable to provide assistance, leaving Pyrrhus without external support. The early years of Pyrrhus' first reign were characterized by the complex and often turbulent politics of Epirus, with changes in leadership and the challenges of a young ruler coming to power. Pyrrhus would continue to face a series of ups and downs in his quest for power and territorial control in the coming years. Pyrrhus' life took an interesting turn as he entered a period of exile and military service. During this time, he served his brother-in-law Demetrius Poliocetes and gained recognition for his martial prowess. Exile and service in the Peloponnese, after losing the throne in Epirus and facing political upheaval, Pyrrhus embarked on a journey to the Peloponnese. There, he served under his brother-in-law, Demetrius Poliocetes. Demetrius had married Pyrrhus' sister, Didamia, and he was campaigning against Cassander in southern Greece. The Battle of Ipsus, in 302 BC, Demetrius led his army to Asia Minor to support his father, Antigonus Monophthalmus. This move aimed to aid Antigonus, who was facing a coalition of rival successors to Alexander the Great's empire. The coalition included Seleucus, Lysimachus, Ptolemy, and Cassander. They had united against the power of Antigonus. Antigonus prays for Pyrrhus, it was during this time that Pyrrhus made a significant impression on Antigonus. Antigonus is reputed to have said that if Pyrrhus lived long enough, he would become the greatest general of his time. This statement reflected Pyrrhus' remarkable military skills and potential. The Battle of Ipsus, the climactic Battle of Ipsus took place in Phrygia, and it was a pivotal moment in the wars of the successors. Pyrrhus likely fought alongside Demetrius on the right wing of the army, a position of honor. He distinguished himself with valor and bravery in the battle. Antigonus' defeat and Demetrius' escape, despite Pyrrhus and Demetrius' brave efforts, Antigonus lost the battle and his life. Demetrius managed to escape with a portion of his forces, approximately 9,000 men. Continued service under Demetrius, following the Battle of Ipsus, Pyrrhus continued to serve his brother-in-law, Demetrius Poliocetes, 
who sought to rebuild Antigonus' empire and exert his influence in the power struggles of the Hellenistic world. This period of Pyrrhus' life in exile and military service was marked by his participation in significant historical events, demonstrating his military talent and valor on the battlefield. His reputation as a skilled and ambitious commander continued to grow during this time. In 298 BC, Pyrrhus found himself in a hostage situation and underwent significant political developments. Hostage in Alexandria, Pyrrhus was taken as a hostage to Alexandria as part of a peace treaty established between two prominent figures of the time, Demetrius Polier Seats and Ptolemy Isoter. This situation effectively placed him under the control of Ptolemy. Marriage to Antigone During his time in Alexandria, Pyrrhus married Antigone. She was the stepdaughter of Ptolemy Isoter and the daughter of Berenice I of Egypt from her first husband, Philip. Berenice I was Ptolemy I's wife, and Philip was a Macedonian noble. Death of Cassander, in 297 BC, Cassander, who had been a significant rival and power player in the region, passed away. His death presented new opportunities for alliances and changes in the political landscape. Ptolemy's support for Pyrrhus, Ptolemy Isoder, who was known for seeking allies and maintaining influence in the Hellenistic world, decided to support Pyrrhus in his bid to regain the Epirote throne. Ptolemy provided Pyrrhus with men and financial resources and sent him back to Epirus. This period illustrates the intricate web of political alliances and rivalries in the Hellenistic era, where leaders like Ptolemy Isoter played a crucial role in shaping the destinies of various figures, including Pyrrhus. Ptolemy's support allowed Pyrrhus to return to Epirus with the backing he needed to attempt to regain his kingdom. Pyrrhus' second reign was marked by a series of complex military and political events as he expanded his kingdom, clashed with rival leaders, and made alliances. Epirus under dual rule, upon his return to Epirus, Pyrrhus opted to rule the kingdom jointly with Neoptolemus, the other king of Epirus. However, this arrangement led to tensions between the two monarchs. Conflict with Neoptolemus, soon after sharing power, Pyrrhus and Neoptolemus began plotting against each other. Pyrrhus, upon learning of a plot against his own life, decided to take preemptive action and invited Neoptolemus to a dinner, where he had him murdered. Transfer of the capital, in 295 BC, Pyrrhus decided to transfer the capital of Epirus to Ambracia, which represented a strategic move and an administrative change. War with Demetrius, in 292 BC, Pyrrhus went to war against his former ally and brother-in-law Demetrius. He invaded Thessaly while Demetrius was besieging Thebes in Greece. Demetrius responded by leading a large army north to confront Pyrrhus. Pyrrhus' victory in name, Pyrrhus and his Epirote army engaged in battle with Demetrius' forces. Pyrrhus, demonstrating his martial prowess, engaged in a personal combat with Demetrius's general, Pentachus. Pyrrhus emerged victorious, and his army, inspired by his success, won the battle and bestowed upon him the nickname Eagle. Macedonian Campaign In 289 BC, Pyrrhus invaded Macedonia, exploiting the illness of Demetrius. He penetrated deep into Macedonia, nearly reaching the old capital of Egi, before Demetrius was able to take the field. However, Demetrius's superior forces compelled Pyrrhus to retreat. Alliance with Lysimachus Lysimachus and Pyrrhus decided to share rulership over Macedonia after their successful campaigns against Demetrius. Demetrius, in response, raised a new army in Greece and laid siege to Athens. Pyrrhus' involvement in the Demetrius-Lysimachus conflict, the conflict between Demetrius and Lysimachus prompted Pyrrhus to assist the Athenians, who had called upon him to break the siege. Pyrrhus marched against Demetrius, forcing him to lift the siege. However, the Athenians were cautious not to allow Pyrrhus's army to enter the city. Peace agreements and resumption of hostilities, Pyrrhus and Demetrius made and broke several peace agreements. Pyrrhus even considered a raid on Egypt but was persuaded otherwise. Instead, he entered a series of short-lived alliances and conflicts with Demetrius and Lysimachus. Growth of Pyrrhus's Empire Pyrrhus's Greek Empire reached its zenith in 286 BC as he ruled and expanded Epirus, half of Macedonia, and Thessaly. However, this expansion was marked by constant political and military maneuvering. Defeat and retreat, the shifting alliances and power plays in the Hellenistic world led to Pyrrhus's retreat from Macedonia and Epirus. He faced threats from his co-ruler, Lysimachus, and experienced a loss of Macedonian support, 
ultimately forcing him to withdraw to Epirus. Campaigns and invasions, Pyrrhus was engaged in campaigns, and at times, he had to defend his realm against foreign invaders. He also maintained some degree of military activity in Illyria. Pyrrhus's second reign was marked by a roller coaster of military campaigns, shifting alliances, and rivalries with fellow Diadochi, such as Demetrius and Lysimachus. His empire's borders and his political relationships were constantly in flux, reflecting the complex and volatile nature of the Hellenistic world during this period. The struggle with Rome, known as the Pyrrhic War, was a significant chapter in Pyrrhus' life and in the history of Rome and Magna Graecia. Here are the key events and battles of the Pyrrhic War. Tarentum's plea for help, Tarentum, a Greek city in southern Italy, came into conflict with Rome when a treaty that prohibited Rome from sending warships into the Tarentine Gulf was violated. Tarentum grew concerned about Roman expansion in Magna Graecia, and their clash with the Romans in Thurii escalated the situation. Pyrrhus' intervention, fearing a Roman attack and inevitable defeat, the Tarentines sought the assistance of Pyrrhus. They requested him to lead their war against Rome, believing he could help them resist Roman expansion. The Oracle of Delphi also encouraged Pyrrhus to aid the Tarentines. Pyrrhus' arrival in Italy, in 280 BC, Pyrrhus entered Italy with a formidable army. His forces included infantry, cavalry, archers, slingers, and most notably, war elephants. These elephants had been provided by Ptolemy II Philadelphus, who also promised to send reinforcements to Epirus to protect Pyrrhus' homeland during his absence. Battle of Heraclea, 280 BC In the Battle of Heraclea, Pyrrhus faced the Roman forces led by Consul Publius Valerius Lavinus. Pyrrhus's superior cavalry, war elephants, and well-disciplined phalanx infantry helped him secure victory. The casualty figures vary in historical accounts, but it was a hard-fought battle. Alliance and further campaigns, following his victory, several tribes and Greek cities in southern Italy joined Pyrrhus. He offered a peace treaty to the Romans, but it was rejected. Pyrrhus then attempted to capture Campania from the Romans, but his efforts were thwarted. Battle of Asculum, 279 BC The Battle of Asculum saw Pyrrhus facing the Roman consul Publius Decius Mus Pyrrhus emerged victorious but suffered substantial casualties. His famous remark about a Pyrrhic victory originated from this battle, as he recognized the high cost of his successes. Strategic withdrawal After the Battle of Asculum, Pyrrhus was left facing three Roman armies, including the garrison of Rome, Lavinus from the south, and Curincanius from the north. Fearing being surrounded, Pyrrhus withdrew to Tarentum, where he wintered his troops. The Pyrrhic War demonstrated Pyrrhus' military capabilities and the resilience of Rome. While Pyrrhus achieved some victories, he also realized the challenges of fighting Rome and its ability to absorb heavy losses. Pyrrhus' departure from Italy marked the end of his Italian campaign, as he shifted his focus to other conflicts and endeavors. Pyrrhus's rule of Sicily was marked by a series of events, including his arrival, the lifting of the Carthaginian siege of Syracuse, and his attempts to consolidate power in the region. Arrival in Sicily 278 BC Pyrrhus received two simultaneous offers in 278 BC, one from the Greek cities in Sicily and another from the Macedonians. The Greeks in Sicily asked him to help them drive out Carthage, a powerful Mediterranean force. Pyrrhus decided to seize the opportunity in Sicily and sailed his army there. King of Sicily, Pyrrhus was proclaimed King of Sicily upon his arrival. He had plans for his sons, with the intent to have Hellenus inherit the kingdom of Sicily and Alexander take control of Italy. Capture of Eryx In 277 BC, Pyrrhus captured Eryx, a formidable Carthaginian fortress in Sicily. This success led to the defection of other Carthaginian-controlled cities to Pyrrhus's side. Negotiations with Carthage In 276 BC, Pyrrhus entered negotiations with Carthage. Although Carthage was willing to come to terms with Pyrrhus and provide support, Pyrrhus demanded that Carthage abandon all of Sicily, making the Libyans see the boundary between the Carthaginians and the Greeks. Siege of Lilibium When peace negotiations faltered due to the Carthaginians' control of the powerful fortress of Lilibium, Pyrrhus initiated a siege of the city. The siege, however, proved challenging. Construction of a fleet, to improve the effectiveness of the siege, Pyrrhus requested manpower and money from the Sicilians to construct a powerful fleet. When the Sicilians became dissatisfied with these demands, Pyrrhus resorted to compulsory contributions and forced to maintain control. 
alienation and hostility, Pyrrhus's actions, including proclaiming a military dictatorship in Sicily and installing military garrisons in Sicilian cities, alienated the local population. Public opinion in Sicily turned against him, and the people were willing to form an alliance with the Carthaginians. Departure from Sicily, facing growing hostility in Sicily and learning about the situation in Italy, Pyrrhus decided to leave the island. He departed from mainland Italy, and as he left, he reportedly said, what a wrestling ground we are leaving, my friends, for the Carthaginians and the Romans. Destruction of Pyrrhus's navy, while Pyrrhus's army was being transported to mainland Italy, his navy was destroyed by the Carthaginians in the Battle of the Strait of Messina. This naval defeat was a significant setback for Pyrrhus. Pyrrhus's rule of Sicily was marked by both military successes and increasing hostility from the local population. Ultimately, he chose to depart from the island to focus on other opportunities and challenges in Italy and Greece. Pyrrhus's retreat from Italy was prompted by a combination of factors, including the Roman resurgence and the challenges he faced in maintaining control over his newly acquired territories. Here are the key events leading to his decision to leave Italy. Roman rebuilding While Pyrrhus was engaged in campaigns against the Carthaginians in Sicily, the Romans took advantage of the respite to rebuild their army. They recruited and trained new soldiers, significantly increasing their military strength. Superior Roman Army Upon his return from Sicily, Pyrrhus faced a well-trained and numerous Roman army led by Manius Curius Dentatus. This Roman force presented a formidable challenge to Pyrrhus and his Epirot army. Battle of Beneventum 275 BC Pyrrhus engaged the Romans in the Battle of Beneventum in 275 BC. This battle was inconclusive, but it revealed the challenges Pyrrhus faced in defeating the Romans and maintaining control in Italy. Decision to Retreat After the Battle of Beneventum, Pyrrhus made the strategic decision to end his campaign in Italy. The continued conflict and the need to deal with the resurgent Rome likely influenced his choice. Returning to Epirus became a priority. Loss of gains in Italy Pyrrhus's retreat from Italy meant the loss of essentially all the territorial gains he had made in the region. The city of Tarentum remained under Epirote control, but his campaign in Italy ended without achieving the decisive victories he had hoped for. Pyrrhus's departure from Italy marked the end of his involvement in Italian affairs. He returned to Epirus, where he would continue his rule and military endeavors in the Greek world. The retreat from Italy highlighted the resilience and strength of Rome as a growing power in the Mediterranean. Pyrrhus's departure from Italy marked the end of his involvement in Italian affairs. He returned to Epirus, where he would continue his rule and military endeavors in the Greek world. The retreat from Italy highlighted the resilience and strength of Rome as a growing power in the Mediterranean. Pyrrhus's last wars and his eventual death marked the final chapter of his military campaigns and the end of his ambitious endeavors. Here are the key events leading to his death. War with Antigonus Gennatas, Pyrrhus, having returned from his campaign in Italy, raised an army and marched east into Macedon to challenge his rival, Antigonus Gennatas. In 272 BC, he won an easy victory at the Battle of the Aous and took control of most of Macedon. Unpopular rule in Macedon Pyrrhus's rule in Macedon was marked by actions that made him unpopular. He allowed his Gallic mercenaries to plunder the tombs of the Macedonian kings in Aegae, which angered the Macedonians. Spartan request, Cleonymus, a Spartan of royal blood, asked Pyrrhus to help him take control of Sparta. Pyrrhus agreed to this plan, aiming to gain control of the Peloponnese for himself. Assault on Sparta, Pyrrhus attempted to take Sparta but faced unexpected strong resistance from the Spartans. During the retreat, he lost his firstborn son, Ptolemy, who had been commanding the rearguard. Battle of Argos, Pyrrhus, seeking another opportunity for military action, intervened in a civic dispute in Argos. However, while trying to enter the city with his army, he found it crowded with hostile troops. In the narrow city streets, the Battle of Argos ensued. Injury and death, during the Battle of Argos, Pyrrhus was fighting an Argive soldier when the soldier's elderly mother, watching from a rooftop, threw a tile that struck Pyrrhus, knocking him from his horse and breaking part of his spine, paralyzing him. It is unclear whether Pyrrhus was alive or unconscious after the blow, but a Macedonian soldier named Zopras beheaded his motionless body, ultimately causing his death. Cremation and Hellenus's return, Antigonus Gennatas had Pyrrhus cremated with full honors. Pyrrhus's surviving son, 
Helenus, was sent back to Epirus. Tarentinian surrendered to Rome. Upon hearing the news of Pyrrhus's death, the Tarentinian surrendered to Rome. Pyrrhus's death marked the end of his military campaigns and his ambitions to expand his rule. His legacy is best remembered for the term, Pyrrhic victory, coined from his costly victories in battles. Pyrrhus left a lasting legacy through his military prowess and his influence on the concept of a Pyrrhic victory. Here are some key aspects of his legacy. Military reputation, Pyrrhus is remembered as one of the greatest military commanders of his time. Hannibal, the renowned Carthaginian general, considered him the greatest commander the world had ever seen, according to Plutarch. His tactical skills and battlefield successes earned him a place in military history. Benevolence, Pyrrhus was known for his benevolence, which likely contributed to his popularity among his soldiers and subjects. Pyrrhic victory, the term Pyrrhic victory originates from Pyrrhus's statement after the Battle of Asculum, if we are victorious in one more battle with the Romans, we shall be utterly ruined. A Pyrrhic victory refers to a victory won at such a high cost that it becomes almost meaningless. This concept has had a lasting impact on language and military strategy. Failed opportunities in Italy, Pyrrhus's campaigns in Italy offered the Greek world an opportunity to challenge Rome's expansion. However, his failure to fully exploit this opportunity allowed Rome to grow into a major Mediterranean power, leading to the First Punic War and Rome's eventual dominance in the Mediterranean region. Written works, Pyrrhus authored memoirs and books on the art of war, although these writings have been lost over time. His works are said to have influenced notable figures like Hannibal and received praise from Cicero. Marriages and family Pyrrhus's many marriages and family connections were a part of his political and diplomatic strategies, helping him form alliances and consolidate power. While Pyrrhus may not have achieved all his ambitions, his military reputation and the enduring concept of a Pyrrhic victory ensure his place in history. Reference Pyrrhus of Epirus, by Jeff Champion, this book provides a detailed account of Pyrrhus's life, military campaigns, and historical significance. The Age of Pyrrhus, Proceedings of an International Conference, edited by Tony Hackens, this collection of academic papers offers insights into various aspects of Pyrrhus's era and his impact on the ancient world. Pyrrhus and Pyrrhonism, Adventures in the Late Hellenistic and Early Roman Worlds, by Richard Bett, this book delves into Pyrrhus's philosophical influence and his connections to Pyrrhonism. The Cambridge Ancient History, The Rise of Rome to 220 BC, edited by P. R. Franck, Chapter 10 covers Pyrrhus's life and the historical context in which he lived. Epirus, The Geography, The Ancient Remains, The History and the Topography of Epirus and Adjacent Areas, by Nicholas Geoffrey Lemprier Hammond, this book discusses Epirus, Pyrrhus's homeland, and provides historical context. You can find these books in university libraries, academic databases, or online booksellers. Scholarly sources like these offer in-depth and well-researched information on Pyrrhus and the ancient world in which he lived.